I'm Kate Warren, and in this video, I'll demonstrate and compare four different right hand techniques for playing the French horn. The first hand position is called the first quarter. The first quarter features a slightly cupped palm where the weight is balanced across the first three fingers. These fingers are flush against the inside of the bell flare and placed approximately at 130 if thinking of the bell as a clock face. As the hand is inserted, the weight is supported by the tops of the fingers, which is different than all of the other hand positions you'll see in this video. As you insert the hand into the bell, be mindful that the elbow and wrist aren't bending to cover the opening of the bell. You're keeping them up and out so the space underneath the palm allows sound to freely come out of the bell. The second hand position is called vertical three o'clock. This features a mostly flat palm where the weight is balanced on top of the thumb and first finger. The hand is then inserted vertically across from the body around where the three o'clock position would be on a clock face. Be mindful not to bend the elbow and bend the wrist to cover the opening underneath the bell. The third hand position is a hand position marked by Engelbert Schmidt's YouTube video in which he describes a mostly flat hand with slightly curled fingers where all of the weight balances on top of the first thumb. For me, that's a bit uncomfortable, so I tend to tuck my thumb and balance it on top of my first finger. I also get a little contact underneath the pinky. This hand position splits the bell evenly in the middle. The last hand position I'm calling five o'clock. It features the same gently cupped palm with fingers pressed against the bell. However, now it's pressing against the bottom third of the bell at about the five o'clock position. This hand position requires the bell to be on the leg. So make sure that the sound isn't being sent directly into your body and that your horn is positioned on the leg where the sound can go out away from your corpse. Cup the palm, place it away from you, and make sure that the palm is faced towards your body. As always, you'll have to make sure your arm and elbow are angled so that they're not in the way of the sound. So I feel like that one, there are a lot of high overtones present in it, but it's a full, like a full range of resonance within the sound. I hear that evenly across the registers from the, from the, the pedal all the way up to the high C, and I hear that pretty consistently throughout the, somewhere over the rainbow chunk. Now, this is the hand position that I usually use, so I imagine I will probably hear a lot more consistency within this one than I will hear in the other ones since I'm just not used to them. But I don't know that I, I really liked how that kind of just filled up the space and was really ringy and wide in its in its presence. <laughs>
from where I am. So this one sounds, I hear a lot more of the high, high overtones. If I remember correctly, I actually didn't like this and I ended up doing it again and liking it better. So I'm just gonna hold on to my opinions for a second and listen to the second time when I made a little tweak to this hand position, see if I like it better. my setup. Sounds a little muffled up close to me. That's probably just because I am not used to it. But it, it doesn't sound clear from the bell. I'm interested to hear how it sounds out over there. Okay, so I think I still stand by my first statement where it just doesn't sound as rich, as velvety, as like thick of a sound. It sounds a little thin, it's a little high overtone heavy, and I'm, I'm missing some of those lows that really rounded out the sound in that first hand position. Um, I think maybe if I was playing like a Baroque style or like some kind of early music, antiphonal music, maybe with woodwinds, I would like this sound better. Um, definitely uses for this sound in other contexts, but I'm already liking it less than the first quarter hand position. <laughs> interested to know what it sounds like out there. I liked it less in the hall here than I did when I was practicing with this hand position, that's for sure. So something that I that I know I had noticed in the bell was how much louder this hand position was, how much clearer the sound came through. I can already tell, I mean, I, I didn't do any mastering to this audio. It's more direct I, I like it is definitely a little louder, but it's not, I don't know, it's it's not as refined. It, it feels a little peaky. I, I can even see on, on my audio meter that it's, it's peaking a little more despite not being that much louder than everything else. So I guess I'm trying to say is maybe it's a little more brassy. It's a little more rough around the edges. Yeah, so I really enjoy how consistent that is throughout the whole register of the horn. I felt like I was hearing the same things in the low register as I was in the high register. Um, especially when I was playing the Somewhere the Over the Rainbow chunk, I felt like the lower notes spoke better. Uh, I, maybe it has to do with a little of the brilliancy. Maybe it has to do with the directness of sound, but I, I felt like I could hear more resonance in the low notes than I would in my original, my, my favorite preferred hand position, the first quarter hand position. I think this has a lot of use for, maybe if I was playing in a brass quintet, or I think especially like if I was playing with a lot of trombones, a lot of very direct sounding brass instruments, trombones, trumpets, something like that, this would blend a lot better with that. I mean, I would, I'm not sure I would use this for solo playing, but that's, that's very interesting. I, I do hear the difference in the directness of sound from this hand position that I don't hear in the other ones. <laughs>
much louder to me. I am hearing a lot more bell sound. I'm interested to hear what it sounds like out there since I know that means I'm just channeling the sound towards my ears. Um, but I hear that as significantly louder. But I don't feel like I played any louder, just to clarify. Okay, so I vividly remember that while I was filming this hand position, it sounded really loud to me while I was playing. And this doesn't come across nearly as much as it did in the Schmidt hand position in these back of the hall recordings. So for context like pit playing or commercial music or some setting where I'm having trouble hearing myself, but I don't necessarily want to play louder, I think this hand position could be a really great tool to use. I think there's definitely some wiggle room for me to improve my hand placement for this. I think the Somewhere Over the Rainbow Chunk sounded a lot better than the range tests, and that was probably just because I moved my hand a little bit in between. So on a personal level, I think I should explore this hand position more. Um, in the initial range tests, I really didn't, didn't feel like there was a cohesiveness across the register. I felt like the low register kind of became dull and hard to hear, while the high register had enough high overtones for it to really ring and resonate. So I should explore placement of that hand position and finding ways to create a cohesive approach to what that sounds like throughout the register of the horn. Um, I do kind of dislike this one based off the sole premise that it has to play on the leg. I have a really tall torso. I know it, I seem very tiny in my videos, but I'm quite tall. Um, so my mouthpiece doesn't really reach my mouth correctly when I'm playing on the leg, even when I pop the knee up. So for me, I probably would not use this hand position regularly simply because it's non-functional for my body type. And that has a lot to play into it. Um, every part of your hand size, your torso height, your mobility or lack thereof like in holding up the horn and its weight, all of that can play into what your hand position is. For some overarching thoughts about what I've heard and what I've learned throughout this process, I think I will probably have been using, which is the first quarter hand position, um, that feels the most comfortable to me. A big part of why I think I prefer that hand position aside, like completely excluding what it sounds like, is that that's a very comfortable position for me to both sit and stand in. And something that I believe you should consider when working with the hand position is, is this sustainable? So something that all the outtakes of these this video session had for me was me, me complaining about how tired my right arm was, especially with the Schmidt position and the vertical three o'clock. They just, they really wore out my, my arm and you know, I'm, I'm pretty in shape. I rock climb four days a week. I, I wouldn't say that my arms are, are weak or, or not strong enough to hold the French horn. So using a hand position that's comfortable just makes a lot of sense to me. And for me, that comfortable hand position would be the first quarter hand position. There's something also to be said for the five o'clock position since it's on the leg. Um, if you did choose that hand position or some variation on that hand position, you would obviously have to do something completely different when you stand and play, which is a whole nother can of worms of like working on different techniques for different settings. If all you do is play in orchestra or band or a seated situation, there's nothing wrong with having a hand position that can only exist in a seated format. But if you give recitals or lectures or master classes or have any other reason or opportunity where you might be standing and playing, it may be worth exploring a hand position that you don't have to change when you do that. Now, if you're up for the challenge, go for it. Absolutely. That, uh, great, uh, every person is different and everyone's approach to playing the horn is going to be different. Just like all of our hands are different sizes. Like I have very long fingers, but thin hands. And that is very different than somebody who has like thicker, meatier hands or shorter fingers or a broader palm. Like the way that your hand interfaces with your bell is going to be different for every person and every French horn. So what works for you probably won't work for somebody else. And that's totally okay. That's the point of trying these hand positions. I, I hope maybe the main idea you get from this video is not that I'm saying one of these hand positions is better than the other, but here are what all four of these sound like to me, for me, on my French horn. You should go do this same experiment with your French horn and your body and figure out which one you like the best and which one you want to play on. So that's your takeaway. Try new things. Uh, hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions or feedback or you want something clarified, drop me a comment below and I will get back to you. In the meantime, happy practicing.